Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching. The channel's called Ratchet. My name's Andrew, and in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look around the business end of the 40. Run the title. Welcome to the channel if you're new. Um, if you're not, thank you for tuning back in for another episode. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button below if you do like what you see and you don't want to miss any future episodes. Like I've mentioned in uh, this instalment, I'm going to be taking a break from doing some of the interior work and give you a bit of a tour over the engine and gearbox, and basically the back half of the car, just to show you how it sits at the moment and also cover off a few little bits and pieces that I want to get done um, over this winter. Let's crack on. So as you may uh, know, I didn't build this car. So I'm still learning how it's put together, learning what components have been installed, you know, basically getting to know the full ins and outs of, of how it sits. So I've raided the file, the paperwork file that came with the car and put together uh, a few notes on the spec sheet of the engine and gearbox because I didn't build it. So in all honesty, I don't know what's in it. Um, all credit to the builder of the car. He put together an absolutely um, blinding engine. It's given me no problems whatsoever. So what I'll do is I'll run you through a few little bits and pieces on the engine just so I can bring you up to speed the same way I've had to bring myself up to speed on you know, what's been put in the back half of the car. So the blocks are Ford 1969 302. So it basically makes it a five litre. All the additional parts thereon were supplied by Real Steel. So it's got Edelbrock aluminium cylinder heads, uh, a, a Holly 600 carb, ARP cylinder head bolts, comp cams, roller rockers, MSD coil, MSD 6AL digital ignition. It's got twin facet fuel pumps, Using one of Tornado's um, adapter plates is a Renault UN1 gearbox. I rebuilt the inner and outer CV joints, both sides. Um, and at the same time as that, I added a, I think it's a, I think the guy's name is Chris King or Chris Cole. He offers a seal upgrade to the inner CV joint cups. Um, because they are prone to leaking. The most striking part of the engine is obviously the bundle of snakes. These have been ceramic coated in a sort of a platinum white colour, which I must admit isn't to my taste, and I think in the end I'll get them done black. But that's not so much on the uh, priority list at the moment. Obviously anyone that's heard a 40 in real life knows that it's, it's the exhaust that really gives the distinctive sound to, uh, to these engines and they sound pretty phenomenal. So the spec of the engine build with all the parts supplied by Real Steel, it should be good for about 300 brake and 300 foot pounds of torque, which at the moment feels plenty and because it's given me no issues so far, I don't wanna mess with it just for the sake of messing with it. So going over the rear clam, um, when I bought the car, like I say, it just gone through the IVA um, and the guy was still ironing out any creases and bits and pieces and getting it smartened up. So the underside of the rear clam wasn't actually painted. It had been um, lined with foil reflective tape, but it was still unpainted um, with overspray of the, of the blue, generally all, all around it. 
So what I did do was uh, I removed the clam beginning of this year, beginning of 2020, and redid quite a few areas. I reformed these splash guards to make them lower. Um, people fit a, an extruded rubber trim along this bottom edge, which looks a little bit half finished, if I'm honest. So I, I extended this fiberglass splash, which then closes down tight on the uh, sill to stop any stones splattering up inside the engine bay. I basically just went round the entire rear clam, tidying up all of the fiberglass work, making sure all, all gaps and meeting junctions of various panels and, 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 and bits and pieces just fitted as nicely as possible. You know, there was a, just a, this small cutout here it's cut out for the battery tray. So all I did was just form a return lip just so it gave it more of a finished look rather than just a, a, a cut piece of fiberglass. I also remade a large portion of these inner trims. There was a big chunk cut out for running a rear anti-roll bar, which on a road car isn't particularly necessary. So it hopefully just gives a bit more of a, a tidy fit and finish of the inside of the rear clam. And then once all of that was sand and filled, I then gave it a coat of um, satin black. So it, it made a huge difference to the overall appearance. And once I'd done that, I was you know, in a position where I felt like I could actually open the rear clam to show the engine because before that I was slightly you know I, I don't want to use the word embarrassed but slightly hesitant about raising the rear clam because it did look so unfinished so that was a, a, a nice a nice thing to get ticked off of the list there's a few other little bits and pieces that I tidied up um, the the battery box uh, needed some work I added a, a, a rubber U trim just to finish the cut edge of the spider so you didn't see that tidied up the body mounting brackets and also the rear clam mounting pins and just did did a few little bits and pieces that just um gives in my mind a slightly more finished look uh, to the car perhaps some of you have noticed um when i've shown some overall clips of the car the white stripe that I've added along the bottom of the car. And the fact it's not particularly in keeping with uh, what people generally do on GT40s. Let me explain why it was actually necessary. When I got the car, the closing edge of the rear clam to the lower sill was pretty bad. It was touching the sill at this corner and it was probably eight or 10 mil high on, uh, on this front edge. So what happened last winter was I actually cut off the um, lower section and reformed it to give me a much nicer closing gap along the sill edge. I've added this six mil rubber trim to give me a perfect constant panel gap along the bottom. This is something that Tornado actually do on their cars and I pinched the idea when I was uh, up at Tornado picking up some parts from Andy one day. Um, the clam alignment cones are I think a fairly standard thing. Um, I've certainly seen them on more than more than a few cars and that just helps pull the body down and keep it snug into place. But basically by working on a painted car forming this new panel edge I then had to mask it somehow so that is why I introduced the white stripe along the bottom edge. And again, while I was sorting out panel gaps, um, I took the door off and uh, just regularized the bottom edge because that was slightly off. So that sorted that. But it's all just difficult to do and nerve wracking to do on a painted car. So that pretty much explains why there's this slightly awkward um, white stripe 
and it's basically to hide some work that I'd previously done. So there are a couple of bits that I do want to do this winter. One is make some straight pipes. So remove the two small silencers that are fitted and just get some scaffold pole and just stick it out in the back and see if it spits some flames. So I'm sure that will be on for about five minutes and then I will refit these and uh, just chalk it up to experience. The other thing I do want to do is just redo this aluminium panel down the, down the side. The previous owner redid the fueling system after he had some initial problems with the original setup that he had fitted. So there is on this panel some old holes from where the original fuel fittings had been fitted. Um, you'll see that a few little fixings and fasteners don't match because uh, yeah, this was installed just to overcome quite a fundamental problem with the fueling. So the, the guy didn't have chance to, you know, dress it up and really sort out the fit and finish before I came along and bought the car from him. So I think I would like to try and uh, reorganise this area, remake the panel to do away with any unnecessary holes. But it's going to be a bit of a pain because it, it, it's bonded in and goodness knows what else. So I'm going to leave this for a while until I'm feeling brave. So that basically wraps up this quick episode. Um, it's been a nice break from plugging away on the interior. If you do like what you've seen, then make sure you hit the like and subscribe button below so you don't miss any future episodes. Um, in the next episode, I'll be cracking back on with the interior. So tune back in for that one because I'm making some really good progress. And I will catch you next time. Oh, you absolute beauty.